Claudia Williams and Gwilym Pritchard are two of Wales's most renowned artists. A marriage of true minds, they have lived together for nearly 50 years, raising four children and painting to make ends meet. For them, life and work have always been neatly dovetailed. Always in search of new places to paint and new nests to feather, they've lived in 20 different locations. This last move from Brittany to Tenby will be their 21st, and possibly their last. I don't think that's awfully good, you know. Well, I can't help the patchy effect. It looks like one of your paintings. Well. <laughs> All textured. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't think well, I'd That's a compliment. This. Is it? Yeah. Oh. All <laughs> textury. <laughs> At 70 years of age, Claudia and Gwilym must be getting tired of all this upheaval. So, with the canvases stacked, the studios allocated, and the finishing touches nearly complete, were they now going to finally settle down? Well, as I say to Claudia, you know, right, we're in the departure lounge now. But um, she said, no, I don't think so. So you never know. This may be just um, another waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the next move, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think lots of painters are like this. They feel that after a certain amount of time that they've got the most out of that. And, you know, they're willing to uh, uproot and explore a different area. Yeah. It is stimulating. I mean, you know... I as think long you as find move... it more than I do. Mm. Um, otherwise, I think that... Um, had I been left alone all my life, I wouldn't have moved from Planistem, do you? <laughs> this house they bought in Tenby used to be an old-fashioned guest house. Not the ideal place to live and work, perhaps. But as long as they find their inspiration and a little corner to paint, they're both perfectly content. I think it is important that you have one place where you can go into and you shut everything else out and um, you can leave your paints around and um, you don't have to clear up. The worst thing for me is to having um, to clean brushes and things like that. I've got over that by um, just using a palette knife which I can just wipe on my trousers. How uh, disgusting. <laughs> Well, or overalls. Um, you don't have to, um, you know, clean. And you, you sort of have dozens of brushes. Um, because I remember um, Claudia once telling me, you know, that you have to have a clean brush for every colour you good use. Good rule, a very good rule. And you'd have your palette and about a dozen brushes sticking out mm. of um, your hand. <laughs> and uh, I tried that, and um, all of a sudden, all the brushes had the same colour on. <laughs> oh, you see, so, you weren't well brought up like no, I was. No, not disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> Living as two artists under one roof, one is bound to influence each other. Yes. And especially after this um, length of time. You know, you can't say that uh, we've actually influenced each other in the way that Claudia does this and Gwilym does it exactly the same as she does it. You know, we're just different mm. in the way that um, we look at things and possibly in the way that um, we s actually see things. Maybe we see colour completely differently. Who knows? Who knows? Although I wasn't an only child, I loved being uh, by myself. I knew every part of the woods, every tree, every stone in the river where the fish would lie. So um, the whole thing must have started from there, you know, my observation of um, the landscape and my feeling towards the landscape. In Wales, the light is so fleeting in a way 
and when it happens, you have the sunlight um, glowing on something, shining on something, you really get remarkable colours, but it's only for an instant. I think there's a poem by um, R.S. Thomas who says that in Wales there are jewels to be found and um, I try and find those jewels. It's the human figure that's always fascinated me. Right from when I was a little child, not the the landscape I can appreciate, but I don't. It doesn't call me to paint it, you know. But it's the, it's the people, and so people are always interesting wherever they are. So I think, um, you know, from that point of view, I'm happy uh, in most places. From very early on, I liked to draw and doing weaving and choosing the colours. It was all part of the enjoyment of um, painting and colour and, you know, that side of life. At art school, it was mainly the life drawing that I really enjoyed. But I was always uh, sort of vaguely searching around for <laughs> subject matter, for serious paintings. And then, when I had our first two children, I used to draw them because they were the, the things that were nearest to me. And I suppose an intensity of feeling came out because I discovered, to my surprise, that I liked having babies and I really enjoyed looking after them. And this maternal thing came out in my work. I think I've been more influenced um, by Claudia, um, especially her colour the blues that um, she's um, been using. I think that probably because I borrowed some of her paint. I'd run out of something and I said, well, this will do. <laughs> and uh, in that way... Um, this will do. Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. It's <laughs> well, that's wonderful. The, that's <laughs> the difference between us, isn't it? <laughs> they certainly do have their differences. But one important thing that Claudia and Willem share is their faith. They've always had their houses blessed by the local priest. This rite of passage seals all their moves and allows them to celebrate and embrace another new phase in their lives. Peace be upon this house and upon all who dwell herein. Let us now pray that he will enter this house and bless it with his presence. May he always be here among you. May he nurture your love for each other, share in your joys, comfort you in your sorrows. Thank you very much. One last prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth doing anyway. Um, because we've had every other house blessed and last time, do you remember in France we had the van blessed? Yes. And then soon after we had that horrible accident. I know. Now, whether um, that was because it was blessed or not, we don't know. But, but let's see, it's an insurance policy. <gasps> um, these things do crack easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Claudia was a little saddened that the family couldn't be there, but some new friends from Tenby and some old friends from Brittany had come to celebrate yet another start in a new house. Well, you look really yes, at home. Really do. <laughs> do you think we do? Yes, yes, well, back, back to your Wales. And, it's um, rather fun to see all the bits and pieces that we knew at Rochefort sort of uh, laid out around here mm. and then how yes. they seem to fit in yes. as if they've never yeah. been anywhere else. <laughs> so you were saying, you know, did we feel at home here? Yes, yes. Well, I think we usually feel at home wherever we go. Yes. As artists, Claudia and Willem believe that moving to a new place allows them to see things in a different light. Tenby provided them with the perfect inspiration. And soon after moving, they were asked to show their new body of work at the local museum and art gallery. 
I think you've got a longer wall than that. <laughs> you have. No, I tell you what it is, you've got more vertical ones. No. I mean horizontal. Horizontal ones. There's a door over there. And you haven't got a door on your side. Oh. Oh, you're crafty, you are. You got in before me. I think with a way of um, hanging the exhibition, um, you know, one or the other of us has, has got to uh, be in charge. Otherwise, you're just um, fluffing around. Oh, so who's in charge today? You are, as usual. I see. <laughs> because I think um, you're far better than I am at um, arranging things. That's not too bad actually, Gwilym. As a start, that links up quite well. Because um, the dark purpley colour. Yes, yes, yes. All so um, one's life that really has been um, a partnership. <laughs> you know, one um, shares. I think that's how we've lasted 50 years. Well, nearly 50 years <laughs> together. Yes, because we feel we're part of the same firm, I suppose. I think of yours, I like the, um, the Tenby one. You have the uh, boat leaving uh, Tenby for Corby. Why? That, Why? It evokes that um, time of day and... Well, I like your, your one of the, the gardens and the rock cliffs and St Catherine's Island, because I feel the water looks so inviting and... Mm. I also think, you know, when I'm painting, of um, what's happening inside the, um, inside the building, you know, whether they're having tea or what they're doing. I also um, tell myself stories when I paint, or I talk to the painting, I would talk to myself. I think it's important. What are they doing in the, in the painting of the cottage with the rusting iron roof? They're just about to go to bed. They're oh, farmers they're... and they go to bed early. Oh, right. They're very tired. Yes. Oh. And it's cold. And the house at the end, which is pale pink, in the parrot one. Oh, yes, they're always there. They're always staring out to the sea. <laughs> they're fascinated by the sea. <laughs> Claudia and Gwilym are also fascinated by and drawn to the sea. The ebb and flow of the tide reflects so well the constant flux and rhythm of their lives. And these paintings perfectly illustrate their new Tenby beat. So, as they prepared for their first show since coming back to Wales, the return somehow symbolised their constant search for new ways of living, seeing and working. Hello, Maria. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You've made my day. I oh, have views. Sure. Okay. I just we've lived the life. It's lovely. Thank you Good. very much. Oh, wonderful. That's it. Can we go home now? <laughs> and so home they went, but not for very long. After all the busyness of the past months, they both needed a break. Hang on. So, okay. sketchbooks packed, they were off again. Right. Oh gosh, I shall be glad to get away. I just hate packing. And I hate we... watching you. <laughs> Rochefort, here we come. This time, their wanderlust wasn't taking them to new climbs, but to old, familiar places. They missed Rochefort en terre in Brittany, a place where they lived and worked for nearly 10 years. Um, one thing that uh, I find that going back, it'll be strange not going into our house. Very. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I'll be, um, you know, tempted. Yes, but or find oneself almost climbing the steps to go in. Yeah. 
I remember when we first went to France, um, I got the feeling I felt so healthy and well there. I miss people saying bonjour. Yeah. Anybody that's passing by, you know, will say hello. And the smile always with it. People in shops are so pleasant. Yeah. And it just makes you feel good to be alive, really. Mm, we are, I know. Claudia and Willem had lived in Rochefort longer than anywhere else. They had felt happy as well as inspired here. And in coming back, it became clear that leaving had been difficult. Is that our roof? Yeah, it's still looking pretty good. Mm, yeah. It is. <laughs> Come on, we mustn't get sad about it. <laughs> I'm not sad. No. no. That was yesterday. Yes. Yeah. But it's nice to come back to appreciate it. It is. Yeah. Do you realise we've got rendezvous in two different places in well, a minute at the or same two? time? Yes. Well, that's... Marie Paul and Armel. Oh, merde. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a, really a leader, I just follow. As long as I can paint, I think I'm happy. If the um, area is paintable, and, uh, well, this place was um, really paintable, we were very happy here. Otherwise, I don't suppose we'd have stopped for 10 years. Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> in Brittany, there, there aren't any really high mountains like the, uh, Snowdonia, but here I painted a lot of um, paintings in the garden and also the rocks and the sea around Finisterre. My work has changed a lot um, since moving from North Wales. It started um, when we were in Greece and then um, coming into France, the colours certainly struck me like shadows had a colour. And even now that um, I'm still influenced by it when I'm painting in Tenby or up in North Wales, um, I'm aware more of colour than I was before. I think my colour, you know, the, the whole paintings now are much brighter and somehow happier paintings. We found ourselves here in Rochefort by chance, really. I had always had a soft spot in my heart for France. Seem to be beckoning somehow. Notre gallery a grandi. It's a fan nouvelle gallery. It's a superb. I started off doing bathers, I suppose, in the late eighties, because when we came to France, there's so much more opportunity to draw people in the open air because it is a more open air country, and so it was just 
ideal for me, that type of subject. So that set off a new series because it was a new set of colours, really, and tones. Hey, bon. Alex. 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 The thing I liked painting very much was bread, either painting or you doing it with pastels. It became almost sort of something, you know, you could pick up. And Gwilym has a story about going to buy some bread, haven't you? Yeah, I went in and um, <clears throat> I was given a loaf and it was a, a fairly pale one. So I asked if I could have that one that was more burnt. I said, more burnt? Why? I said, well, my wife is um, painting bread at the moment. And she said, oh, I would like to see the painting when it's finished. Um, that's, you know, we found that people had far more interest in what you were doing. I mean, the postman would sort of ask what we were doing, mm. wouldn't he? Mm. Hi. It is obvious that there had been subtle differences in their lives as well as in their work here in Brittany. This period had sparked a shift in colours and themes that have been carried through to the present day. They had flourished here as people as well as artists, and the return made them realise what they had lost. I think that coming back, which they say you should never do to an old home that you've had, has um, made me realise the differences of life here in France and life back in Wales, which you know, there are beautiful things about Wales, and uh, I'm very happy there. But I was exceedingly happy here as well. Oh, well, there we are then. <laughs> One always has a choice. For the first time ever, Claudia and Gwilym chose to step back over the threshold of an old house. The converted boulangerie in Rochefort was a place dear to their hearts and they couldn't resist taking a peek at their fantastic studio overlooking the church. I think it's so sort of, um, strange thinking, you know, that we painted all this area, I taped all the, you know, mm, the big. amount of work that um, one does. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. It's... Um, I feel sad in a way. Mm, I do too. <laughs> what there have we are. done? <laughs> Lost it. Yeah, but, you know, one moves on. Yeah. I don't know. If, do you know this is the first house we've come back to? Mm. We shouldn't have done it. <laughs> but there we are. It's done. <laughs> or shall we go down then? Yeah. Okay. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we receive from thy bounty. And thank you also, Lord, for the family gathered here together. We're so pleased to see them all, and they've come a long way to be with us. God bless you all. Great, let's eat. Amen. 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 <laughs>
Claudia and Willem are never ones to languish in the past. And so, back in Tanby, they delighted in the joys of a traditional family Christmas. But despite the festivities, that unsettled air still lingered. Only yesterday, Willem was saying that he was in the kitchen and he said, I think in the next house we'll have a kitchen big enough to have an arg in. <laughs> and... Uh, there were various other requirements, and I thought, oh, right, OK. So you're not settled then, so that's that answer then. Well, I think that Claudia has got, uh, uh, who was it that said, um, she has twigs in her beak. Twigs in what her beak? I've yeah. got twigs in my beak. Well, that means nest, <laughs> it's, it's not an insult, Claudia, it just, oh, means, well done, it just means nest building. I know building. what it means. <laughs> oh, you know what it means, yes. all right. Um, do you know, uh, Cathy, sometimes I think it'd be rather nice to have stayed in one place the whole of one's, uh, well, lifetime. Yes. But then, you know, when you think back, you know, that um, having moved houses and various things, you've got, um, like, oh, stepping like stones in your life. Like I, no, I mean, that's... They're just, just a pair of rolling stones, really. They are they? a pair of ageing rolling stones, <laughs> yes. I think we're very happy here, aren't we? You know? Yes. Well, we're happy if we're together. Yes. By and large. By and large, yes. We're happy and in the house. Yes. We do miss France. Yeah. Can't but avoid it's, um, saying that. But it's also absolutely um, lovely being uh, able to go for walks on the beach. Yeah, it is. You know, that poet by somebody in sand between the toes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Milne? A. A. Milne, yes. yes. So I think we're extremely um, lucky people. We are. Claudia and Gwilym have travelled many paths together. And this present journey of theirs came to an end on South Beach. They had followed in the footsteps of their work and had come full circle on Tenby Sands. But their search for ever-changing ways may not yet be over. Now, a different slant of light may show them yet another way. <laughs>